We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. It is 6.30. First up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Jordan Chapman. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear you? Mr. I'm Chapman, sorry, I missed, you get... I missed the question. Yes, you're up. You're up. Awesome. <clears throat> Well, thanks for having us, guys. Uh, Jake Modesto is here with me with uh, Stonefield Engineering, and I'm with Allrig USA. Um, we're a real estate development company based out of Metro Detroit, and uh, we're currently working you know, on our contract for a property um, at 328, I believe it's Main Street in Hadley. And uh, you know, we we're hoping to to get some some feedback on a you know a conceptual review. Um, with our initial concept plan and you know kind of our thoughts for the property um <clears throat> we're currently working on a number of deals in the northeast and you know throughout the country um we're pursuing this specific site for a uh, car wash user and you know i'll let jake speak more in depth on the the site plan specifics yeah i'd love to speak about it. is it possible to share my screen and just show you kind of what we've come up with preliminary for 328 russell yep hang on a sec okay I just to orient you guys, it's right across on the north side of Russell Street, just across from the Duncan, um, just south, we'll call it, of Chipotle. So it's it's on an undeveloped parcel um, currently. And I should be able to share my screen now. You guys see my screen? Got it. There it is. So Duncan Donuts, uh, Chipotle, uh, just to the north of the property, north side of Russell. <laughs> So essentially what we're looking to do uh, is a single lane uh, automatic car wash located centrally on the, on the lot uh, with, an ex with a full mode driveway that would line up with the driveway across the way. Um, we'll have approximately 20 parking spaces. We'll have some, several set away, uh, set away as vacuum and employee. We'll have a single queue into a uh, just over 6,000 square foot uh, automatic car wash. Um, We'll have over you know 20 queuing spaces running the perimeter. And yeah, that's it's really the scope of the project. We will be looking to subdivide the parcel. Uh, there are some um, you know mapped wetlands. We're we're gonna work to get uh, an actual uh, flagging of those, but we wanted to talk to the board in particular about the layout, the use, um, and any initial comments that anyone may have at this time. Well, it's a, it's a permitted use in a permitted zone. Mm -hmm. Don't the only comment I would make is to make sure that the I'm assuming you in okay so you enter from the north and exit from the in the south facing Route Nine. Make sure that your exit is far enough off of Route Nine so that the water that drags off of the car um, doesn't get into the highway. We'll make sure that happens. Okay. Um, the uh, the other car washes that are on Route Nine are set back far enough. That I mean, there's a there's a there's a puddle in front, um, the F L Roberts one that is near the Amherst Town line has a bit of a dip so that the water kind of goes down and comes up, and it can't come onto Route Nine. That's my only comment on the drainage. Yep. Um, other some of you will remember this as parcel C from home. And that was the one that they withdrew from consideration because they got into a, between a rock and a hard place. The planning board wanted the, this parcel to uh, use the existing uh, right of way uh, into the Home Depot campus and exit at the signalized intersection. And the Conservation Commission didn't want to allow that much wetland to be crossed and wanted a street uh, access. Um, given that there is a widening proposal underway for Route 9, and given that this is probably not going to be a heavy traffic use, um, it's probably not as much of an issue as it was the last time we took it up. But I just wanted to throw in that background. Okay. Um, Do we know how many trees we're losing? Not at this time, no. We'll, we'll have that number before we actually make a formal submission. 
And <clears throat> we've we've ordered uh, you know an Alta Topo survey, and that should be back here in the next week. Um, and that'll give us you know really allow us to do some more with this uh, concept. Say that again. No, the vacuum. What? <clears throat> we'll be getting our survey, um, our land survey back here okay. in the next week, and it'll, it'll really allow us to do you know it'll show the trees and. Um, allow us to do more with this plan and show you more. Um, do the radiuses need to accommodate a fire truck or? We haven't discussed this with uh, the fire department quite yet and we'll work with whatever they need um, to run an access building. Rarely am I seeing uh, the need for any kind of access lane. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a car wash. It's a, usually a, a pretty simple build uh, with a hollow tunnel. So. Um, there's not much to it um, from a fire access standpoint. Yeah, that, that, that first corner seemed kind of sharp for a fire truck, that's all. Yeah. Because we do have um, two sizable ladder trucks that we use on time to time that would be could be dispatched to the fire. So, they, well, the police, the fire department will take a look at that when the time comes. So, yeah. And we'll make sure we, you know, we run the necessary trucks and the ladder trucks through the side to ensure they can at least get to the building for sure. Uh, it's not our, I guess, conservation would look into how you process your wastewater, right? Yep. You know, these, these modern ones too, is it's most of them. And, and this one in particular, we'll be using a reclamation tank. So everything's going to be directed internally. Most of the products being used nowadays, it's not the old school uh, chemicals. Usually they're biodegradable, OSHA approved. So all that will most likely be, you know, implemented on this facility in this location. Is OSHA approved chemicals? I thought that was. OSHA, OSHA yeah. looks at everything. So you are in our aquifer protection district. So just be mindful of that section of the zoning bylaw. Again, it's allowed, but subject to the constraints imposed by that section. Mm -hmm. and the, the other thing too is, Bill, whenever you get a chance, you don't mind sending over the previously uh, at least submitted plans for this property, just so we have some background understanding what the board has and, and you know, has seen um, in the past and take some of that feedback into consideration. Uh, we really don't have anything available. Uh, okay. This permitting was probably close to 15 years ago, and we don't have anything electronic, and our paper files have been moved three times in the past five years. So um, it, the point is it never got anywhere. Uh, the uh, developer couldn't uh, resolve the issues between the two boards and they just withdrew in, the whole thing from consideration. Okay. So uh, we, we really have nothing that would be realistically useful at this point. It was worth the ask, understood. And the other thing too is, I think it says the planning board is to determine the number of parking spaces for this user. I'm not sure if it's a discussion to have now or later on. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're accurately depicting enough parking spaces in this facility. You know, majority of these parking spaces, we have 20 ac across the building, um, you know, are, are going to be situated for vacuum spaces, um, which is customary um, for this kind of user. The, well, the parking area, we don't, we, we don't go by parking spaces. We go by parking area, two mm -hmm. square feet of parking area per square foot of building. And Basically, the way that goes is your parking spaces and the access lane to access your parking spaces. So your your um, area where you got your parking spaces and the area just to the right of that where you show like drive in, like that big long rectangle, would all be included as parking area. And a quick visual look at this says you probably have the two for one. Okay. But it would need to be calculated out to formally show that. Okay, we can make sure that calculation is provided to the board. Yeah, and just for your information, we also um, we use reviewing engineers to review your plans, so that you know make sure drainage and everything else works. Um, so, I believe, Mr. Dwyer, you have a list of the review. I have. A, uh, yeah, I'll send a list around. So he will, Mr. Dwyer will sit, will email you a list of the reviewing engineers 
You can contact them directly. You don't need to go through the planning board. We don't want to know every little detail that you go back and forth. What we're really looking for from the reviewing engineer is a letter that says you comply with the zoning bylaw. Understood. And drainage works and stuff like that. Okay. So, Mr. Dwyer, I believe we spoke about this in, uh, probably a month or so ago. Is that <clears throat> the concert was it the conservation committee would also require it so to try to align potentially using the same reviewer uh for the same project right so what you'll want to do there is um you need to con consult with them uh mm -hmm. i am sending you the uh, the peer review engineer list right now and um when you sit down with the conservation commission um uh, you uh, just talk with them about what, um, let's see, is that it? Um, you'll talk with them about what you're doing and uh, they can figure out whether these consultants can help. Okay, understood, thank you. So the way you've got this drawn, it looks like you pull in do your vacuuming and then you pull back out through that same aisleway and then you go around the big u-turn if you would or the u-loop to get into the building so you don't have the, the parking the vacuum do not have direct access to the loop to go into the uh, car wash uh yeah so you, you'd actually after you exit we're expecting most of our customers to come through um, you know, through the actual pay lanes, up and around, through the building, and then make a U-turn back into the vacuum spaces, um, almost as an amenity to the car wash. We're not anticipating this to be generated, you know, uh, customers be coming here for vacuum spaces, but as an amenity to the uh, the car wash that they just had. Okay. Yeah, that's what I usually, I go in after and I dry all my door wells and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So to use your vacuums, you need to go, I mean, this is just a question, to, to use the vacuums, you need to go to the car wash first? That would be the intent, yes. Okay. But you don't have to, anybody can pull in and vacuum, correct? Right, right. At the current time, that's the way it's laid out. We're still working with our internal team uh, to come out with a, you know, a fine tuned layout, but the, for all intents and purposes, you know, most, most of the car wash facilities we've seen, um, the, the intent is to have this only post, um, you know, wash. I do agree that like currently right now, as it's laid out, it's very easy. You could come in, you know, after, um, without any kind of physical barrier. Okay. That's your business plan, whatever it is. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Well, we meet the first and third Tuesday of, the, of each month. From the date that you apply for site plan approval, if everything is in order, um, normally we schedule the public hearing one month later, depending on uh, holidays and availability, but typically a, a four weeks later. And that four weeks really is dependent or because of the legal notice that must go into the, the, lo the local newspaper. And if everything is in order and there aren't any issues, typically you can get approval on your first public hearing date. Oh, that's great news. Thank you. And there is an appeal period of 20 days. Understood. To 28? 20, 20 days. 20. 20 days after filing, with the, after the decision is filed with the town clerk and stamped with the date. There's a 20 day appeal period. If nobody appeals on a 21st day, you can get your building permit and go forward. Understood. Okay. Anything else? And then any, any subdivision um, that doesn't need to be presented in front of the board, does it? That's only, uh, you're talking a uh, approval not required plan. Yes, that's that's an informal you come into a meeting like this show the plan your surveyor or engineer whoever it might be would show the plan would approve it. One of us would need to sign it and then you file it with a town clerk and a registry of deeds. Understood. That's that's no that's nothing more than an informal approval. 
Okay. And it was a small filing fee, naturally. <laughs> As always. Yeah. Well, the the, uh, the locally, just just so you'll be aware of this, the the legal notices in the newspaper have gone out of sight in the last year. It used to be about a two hundred dollars for the required legal notice. The last several that we put into the newspaper have been running up to six hundred dollars. They're they're just expensive. That's all I can tell you. So, got a budget for that. I've got one. I got one right in front of me. We got a, we got a bill. We got to pay tonight. It was a legal notice. Um, I believe it might have been for a zoning thing, but the total bill is six hundred twenty dollars and seventeen cents for twice in a newspaper, and it wasn't a big notice, but. It is what it is. So, yeah. Thanks for the heads up. That, that's well. That, that's required by state law. That's not something that we're doing. Right. State law says you must publish twice an old legal notice twice in the newspaper. Yada yada yada. But just making you aware of it. I appreciate that. Okay. Very good. Thank you guys. Thank awesome. you. Good luck. Thank you, you for having us, guys. Next up, Mr. Dwyer. That would be Mr. Iser. Good oh. evening, gentlemen. <clears throat> Two things tonight. Um, number one, I sent Mr. Maximowski and Mr. Dwyer an email regarding Kevin Michelson and his uh, continuously continued hearing. And I've spoken with him and convinced him that it would make sense at this point in time to withdraw his application without prejudice and reapply when he has all his ducks in a row. His biggest thing is his septic system. He thought he would be able to go to the town board of health, get uh, the old plans and have an engineer look at them and, and revise them or whatever would need to happen, but they can't seem to find them. So until such time as he has that together, we're just, just gonna withdraw. And I know that the board had said something about possibly allowing him to reapply within five years and not have to pay the filing fee again, but would be responsible for the legal notice in the newspaper. So if that's, that's what I told him, that's what I was told. So I hope that's reality. Yeah, that, that was something that we talked briefly about at one of our meetings, but I talked to Randy and because this is just dragging on for a long time, I suggested that. And it seems like a reasonable compromise. I mean, the filing fee itself that the planning board makes is modest. The big, like I just mentioned to the prior uh, person that the legal, yeah. legal, legal notices that would cost some money. So um, if anybody has any, doesn't have any concerns, let's entertain a motion to allow Mr. Michelson to withdraw and reapply at a future date at no filing fee, but only pay for the legal notice. I will make a motion to allow withdrawal without prejudice and waive future filing fees if resubmitted within 60 months, uh, but to pay uh, legal notice of publication. Very good. Do we have a second? I'll start. Second. Do we have any discussion? Grand Oak has a question, please. This is John Rogers sitting in to represent Grand Oak. Um, one of the questions that we have is how will the town notify Grand Oak that an application has been resubmitted if we're talking about 60 months time? Say that again now, what was that? The question is how would the town, how would the planning board notify Grand Oak that an application oh, has been received. That's easy. When the legal notice goes into the newspaper, the abutters will be notified again by paper mail, just like you were the first time. So the abutters or all of us? Any abutters that were not any abutters within 300 feet of his property, just like they were the first time. So if the abutters change, you know, somebody say, say somebody sells a property that it is a butter, the new abutter will be notified. Great. Um, the other question that we have 
is since the Board of Health is the prerequisite uh, for the particular application uh, uh, of topic, um, we would also like to be notified of their involvement over this course of time um, as, as the, uh, this application would then be, be forwarded to the planning board. Well, Meaning the, the Board of Health is part, part of the accessory apartment bylaw strictly through the bylaw. So he will still need to come. He, we don't need their approval for him to withdraw. So whatever he's going to do in the future, he would whatever he's had to do today will be the same in the future unless something changes in Title V. So the, the, okay. the Board of Health will still need to approve the septic system. All right. Is there any possible way that the Grand Oak could get notification when they are given a, a new application for a submission? So that we would have time to discuss it before it gets to the planning board? I don't believe it requires a public hearing on the part of the ZBA, a part of the Board of Health. Right. Um, the bylaw asks, the bylaw specifies that a, an application for an accessory apartment on septic comes with certification from the Board of Health that uh, the system is adequate. Uh, what the Board of Health does to certify adequacy is entirely within their purview. And we have no uh, authority. I mean, you're welcome if you want to talk with them about whether there is something they can do informally. Uh, fine, but I don't think they'll be having a formal hearing of any sort on this. All right. So, but basically, we just wanted to make sure that we are informed of any action on this through the town um, if it is resubmitted. That's the basic request. Yes, the, this application is being withdrawn. He will have to file a new application at some point in the future, which will be processed the same way this one started out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4-0 with one absent. Mr. Zagradnik absent. Okay. Okay, will, thank I you. I will let the town clerk know. Great, thank you for that one. And then item number two, Mr. Paul Naris at 10 Russell Street. He is not quite finished uh, buttoning things up. He hasn't been allowed to open for business, but that's not the issue at hand. He wants to put some, he's got to put some propane tanks behind the building for his heat system. And he has talked with the building inspector about putting a shed type roof on the back of the building to protect these tanks. And uh, the building inspector said, you need to go talk to the planning board. So I'm just asking if you guys will have an issue if he were to put a shed roof that extends probably five feet or so from the back of the building towards the rail trail. And it, it, he's got to work out the, the uh, ultimate details with the building inspector, but the concept is what I'm asking about this evening. How how, how do I say this? What is the length of the shed, Randy? He the wants it to, he building. wants it to be the length of the building. He wants it to be the length of the building. Yes. Okay. I can just hear Joe now talking about a change. Can you, we'd like, I'd like to see a picture of it. Okay. Okay. Shame yeah. he can't tie into the natural gas pipeline that goes up right right up route nine <laughs> yeah wouldn't that be nice all right so you want to see a a, a basic rendering of what he's yeah. trying to do right mm -hmm. maybe maybe two sides from looking from the west and looking from the south i'm mean, looking okay. from the north okay i'm assuming it's not going to be visible from the front from the from the north from yeah, a, a it, south view yeah it won't be visible from the the front it be minimally visible from coming over the bridge, but I'll take a ride by and see. I'm I'm not overly uh, 
equipped to get you wonderful renderings, but I'll I'll see what I can come up with okay. for you. How is okay. how is the building sitting relative to the setbacks on the north side? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not quite certain about that. Uh, I'll have to look into that as well. Okay. 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 So I'll 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 see what I can get together for you for the next meeting. I know the building inspector is on hiatus right now, uh, and when he gets back, I'll talk with him and then get you guys what you need and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. That's all I have for tonight. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Let's see. I have Peter. I don't, I guess I don't have any more. Peter Forte or Fort. Uh, Pat says. Mr. Says. Mr. Sis. Hello. Okay. I got the right button this time. Am I coming through this time? We can hear yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so from our last conversation, I've not been able to find any of my original paperwork other than the tax paperwork for my expenses on the trailer. And we were discussing about the zoning, etc. My quick question now is because at the time uh, when the trailer was brought here in 93, it was jacked up off the wheels. So the wheels are not touching the ground and all around the outside frame, it's supported by uh, two wide by three deep cinder blocks with an extra one on top so that the wheels are raised and it's sitting on the cinder blocks. Is there any possibility of any other alteration or renovation, et cetera, whatever you would call it, to convert it or be, have it be considered converted to an accessory building out of whatever the definition of a trailer may officially be. I guess if that makes sense. We're just to be clear, we're talking about 35 North Maple? Yes. Okay. The, basically you need to make that trailer a permanent part of your building to be, to be used as an accessory apartment. Okay. I don't think, I, I think he's talking more about having a home business. And does the home business have to operate out of the house? Or can, it, can it operate out of an accessory building? An accessory building, according to the yeah. bylaw. And so I'm just wondering, because again, because of the issue with it being a trailer, office trailer, but because it's off the ground, say if we, if I even take, the, I've only got two sets of wheels in the middle on either side because it was easily transportable. But right now, all these years, it's been sitting on, the cinder blocks partially sunk and partially above ground all around the frame, like every so many feet all the way around. So it's pretty stable. Again, what would be possibly considered to convert it to an accessory structure? Because that's it's worded as accessory structure, as far as I remember from so, the- So we're not talking about an accessory apartment. We're talking about a home business, correct, Pat? Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because it's the it's the office trailer, and we got into the issue about the zoning, or you know, initially when I brought the trailer here, I was told that I was able to have the trailer here. At the time, there was an issue with people, as I mentioned last time, people down the river. So then, I had spoken to the building inspector at that time, and at that time, I didn't remember going in front of the going to the zoning board per se because someone from zoning was in the town hall at the time that I was speaking. With the building inspector this is the fall of 93 1993 and they stated because of this issue to hold off on doing anything with the trailer any interior work to turn it into the studio because of whatever was going to be somebody was not cooperating down by the river and that's where it came out from whoever that was from zoning and the building inspector that if the town had to go to banning trailers outright then i wouldn't be able to do it and so I held off. And then the following spring is when I, as I mentioned last time, is when we started doing the work on the trailer. So I'm just wondering if there is any possible, you know, again, with removing the wheels or whatever, it's a, it's a separate structure to be able to be considered an accessory structure versus whatever would define a trailer so that we don't touch on it. Because we talked about that issue last time about the zoning or the ability to have it or not, or or however.
if you start redoing the the uh, the trailer, you're going to be subject to building code, okay? Uh, and so that can entail a lot. Just be aware of that. Correct, gentlemen? Yeah, that might be, that might, the idea of converting a trailer to an accessory structure probably is, is okay from a zoning point of view, um, as long as it not does not become a dwelling. But, um, I would really encourage you to talk with the building department about what that what that entails. If you make that election, and as Mike says, if you have to then bring it all up to current codes um, for accessory structures versus I don't know if there are separate codes for uh, trailers, um, that may turn into a nightmare. Yeah, you, you at least yeah. need a building permit to do anything. You can't, you know, you can't even put a, correct me if I'm wrong, Zeke, uh, you can't even recite a tobacco shed without a building per permit nowadays, correct? That's correct. And I did um, uh, get a confirmation from the building department that they have no, uh, no recent filings for this property. Um, I guess there might have been an ins our, uh, inquiry about insulation, but other than that, uh, whatever happened in 1993 was not documented on the uh, building department's end. Right. Well, and, and initially, I figured there might not be anything from the building department. I did get an, an electrical inspection because I had to get a permit to have electricity put in and that's what I'm still trying to go back and find the, the you know the original paperwork because I know I did have an electrical inspector come in the con the contractor the carpenter that did the interior because basically it was interior work it was you know putting in carpeting putting soundproofing on the walls the office trailer has no bath there's no plumbing there's no bathroom no kitchen nothing livable that was another stipulation at the time as far as advice as far as being able to do it because it's considered really as as i was told at that time it was considered a storage facility so there might i didn't think there might have been anything through the building department but i do know that i had to go through the electrical inspection and that's what i'm still trying to find my paperwork i found my tax re tax returns with all the document financial documentation but i'm still trying to find those that original paperwork of of all the work so as far as carpentry was interior then i'm assuming you know he would have gotten anything or if he didn't then it was just the interior work of, of the trailer itself that was probably not permit not needing a permit but the electrical inspection i do i did have to you know i paid the electrician to get the permit because that was i remember that being on the receipt that's that's as far as my knowledge of the whole construction process or whatever so but i can check i will definitely check with with the building inspector then you know i mean that was my only other question is is, is it possible because it's you know set up already other than livable to be considered an accessory structure we're using uh the, the highway departments in two trailers down at the uh, dpw so um, I think there is precedent for using a, um, a trailer type structure as a, a detached or accessory building for non-residential purposes. And why don't you want to keep it just as it is, Pat? Well, well initially, the, now the issue has come up about the zoning about not having trailers versus what I was told back then. And then the main thing would be coming to the plant, my initial uh, inquiry to the planning board was to get a home occupation permit to have my studio to, to, you know, to have my studio set up to do, I'm basically doing my own music work and things, but now to go onto the internet, I have to be able to or potentially would have to do a doing business as if I want to go under a business name. So, so that yes, you, you, you may right. need, uh, you may need to have a, a home occupation special permit, but 
before you ask us for that, be really sure through the building department that you're going to be able to use what you've got. Otherwise, we'll all be just going around in circles for a while. Right. Oh, yeah. And I, 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 under, I certainly understand that. I mean, that's where, to my knowledge of this whole process of, of, you know, is there any possibility to convert to an accessory building, given the issue of trailers versus what was said back then, yada, yada, or whatever. You know, I don't want to, I, I, I certainly don't want to create problems for anybody or take up any time more than I would have to or you know too much so time. Those, those issues about trailers were all about trailers in the residential context. And they but were as, only, as I said the DPW was using office trailers. Uh so I don't think that's a that is a problem. Um other other than I'm still in residential. I mean I'm right on the border of the industrial park surrounding my mother's property obviously but the zoning the home occupation like, bylaw allows that's why you have to go for the home occupation um bylaw because you are not in a business district but we do right. allow a small business to be operated in the residential district correct i i just want to make sure about mainly the the what was brought up in our last discussion as far as the trailer itself and the zoning so that I, if there is any potential of, again, and I'm repeating it myself, sorry, but, you know, as far as undefining, if that makes sense, it as a trailer so that I'm not getting any zoning issues or whatever. It's not a, it's not a zoning issue, as Bill said, if you're using it for a home occup occupation. Oh, okay. Okay. Because last time we said it wasn't allowed in residential, but if it is then it could be going through home occupation then. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the best thing I'll get right to the, the building inspector then to, to get further information. He is out for a few more days. So, right. uh, right. Okay. Then I guess that's, that's basically, that was my main question as far as, you know, correcting the issue as far as trailers allowed or whatever. So that helps. That definitely helps. And I will get in touch with him. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would also note that the University of Massachusetts has its parking services offices in, in trailers in the town of Hadley. Well, that's a little bit different. They're, they're, they're a state entity. They're kind of, <laughs> they're kind of exempt from a lot of stuff, Mike. Let me mark. No. So we say it in court claim Dover Amendment exception. Okay. Your favorite. Next up, uh, Tom Corbett. Uh, good evening. Tom Corbett with Zero Point Development. Um, I am submitting a special for a special permit and I believe site plan review as well uh, that's along with the solar energy system. Um, I've spoken with Tom Quinlan about the zoning um, and he's determined that it's a okay to move forward with you guys. And I have, at the same time, on November 30th, we, Tom Quinlan and I, um, the, the fire chief and the deputy fire chief all met on site and kind of reviewed it before I submitted to make sure there's no problems with the fire department's end and the zoning end. Um, so I'm here to formally submit for special permit and design review and trying to figure out a fee attached with that as well. What's the address of your site again? Uh, this is Breckenridge Road. Uh, the tax successors map is 29A. This is um, Kozinski's um, pit up there. Uh, right above the park there off of Huntington. Okay. You have a location, Tom, about on your property? Is it going to be on the roof or uh, on the uh, this is This is for uh, battery storage. So this is a standalone battery storage system that's um, it absorbs solar energy during the day while it's being produced and it discharges it later at night for it to be used during peak demand times. Um, so the, the charge windows for these are dictated through the EDC's so area of resource in this case. Um, be on and typically well, our right charge now. windows are between how, how um, big are these the batteries? hours for solar production as we're absorbing solar production that they produce during the day. Where well, are the collectors, Tom? Uh, this isn't. This is not coupled with the collector itself, um, but there are solar solar farms on this particular three-phase feeder. Um, 
So the project size is a five megawatt project. Uh, the footprint of this project is about 120 by 150 feet. Um, but you can see that in the plans, I did digitally submit that with um, Bill Tay. And where are the batteries made? Uh, the batteries are all made overseas currently. There's no major US vendor for the I swear right. they made overseas in France. Uh, no, these ones specifically are Chinese. For, the, most of them are from China. All the UID and um, there's another company there too as well. Um, so potentially they could be made with slave labor? Uh, that I can't answer. I don't know. That's speculation. <laughs> That's irrelevant to zoning. Yeah. No, it's so, irrelevant, what, but it's irrelevant to me as a concerned citizen about what's going on. Well, that may be, but as zoning, it, has, it is irrelevant. So you're applying, the, the, the solar field is already there? There are solar fields already. We're applying under the solar bylaw um, as, a, as a collector of solar uh, for later distribution and subsequent sale of the, um, solar energy. So this site is one we previously approved for a solar field. It's the uh, sand pit off of um, Breckenridge. That was never built. But what I understand he is saying is they want to put in just batteries because they will be on the same circuit as, as other existing solars so that they'll uh, absorb some of the existing energy for evening out and discharging it later. Correct. Yeah. As, as opposed to simply net metering? Excuse me? As opposed to simply net metering or? Uh, correct, yeah. So this is all a state initiative through the Baker um, Polito administration through a clean peak energy standard. Um, this is the next phase of renewable energy. Solar's out in the state. There's a mess of solar in the state already. Um, there's no more incentives moving forward for solar. Um, we're pretty much lucky to get the solar fields that we have currently in. Um, so battery storage is up and coming, as you can already see it with the the home style, the residential style energy storage with your rooftop solar. Um, so this is the next step with all the offshore wind initiatives in the state through the Biden administration and Baker Levo administration. Um, we have about 1600 megawatts worth of offshore wind coming into the Memphis Vineyard area over the course of the next few years here, they'll be all getting connected. And the only way to get that energy from the Cape to out to Western Mass is battery storage and having that within the grid structure in order to electrify the grid and electrify our car sources. So no. in, order to in order to charge your cars on the grid, you need battery storage. Uh, that simply doesn't work without it. It's not enough for. Now, so, what no. are these batteries? What are these batteries made of? These are lithium iron phosphate, which are actually the safest chemistry involved with lithium ion batteries. Uh, they don't use any heavy metals. There's no detriment, um, harm to the environment if anything was to ever happen. And I have letters from um, some consultants that we deal with that we work directly with them to develop our ERP with the fire. What do you mean by heavy metals? Uranium uh, so, type stuff or, or exotic metals, which are a bit different? Rare earth metals, which are a bit rare. different. What, no, it would be it would be more so uh, like cobalt, magnesium, stuff like that. That's involved with other um, chemistry types of lithium ion batteries, uh, but liquid and iron phosphate. So these so, are dry storage batteries. These are dry. Yeah, this is these are in containers. Um, not so much looking like a Connex box, um, but you could compare it to that. Do you have there any other battery storage facilities in Western Massachusetts? Uh, I believe there was an application. I was talking to Bill about the or uh, Tom Quinlan about this. There was an application for one to be added to a solar field during the SMART program, and I'm not sure if there was one ever actually added. Um, but there are plenty. We have a company. We have about 70 megawatts worth of batteries on our solar fields throughout the state, uh, throughout this whole state. Um, so, as you see, a lot of other developers doing the same over the past three, four. Are those years. three so, pad-mounted transformers at the end of the driveway. Is that what I see? Yep. So that's the that's the typical interconnection. So that's an Eversource interconnection point. Um, we don't dictate what that equipment can look like or where it can be placed. Really, they kind of have the ultimate say at the end of the day on that. Um, well, yeah. Why is Hadley an ideal place to place these in Western Massachusetts? Um, actually, any place in Massachusetts is ideal. Um, I have about seventy projects throughout the state right now. Uh -huh. yeah. Getting get back, 
getting back to the type of batteries, you're in the aquifer. Exactly. If there's hazardous materials yep. involved, you are not permitted. Yeah, there's no hazardous materials that gets discharged at any point in time. I have, a, I have letters that can account for that. Well, if can the, can the batteries leak? No. These are totally dry batteries. These are dry batteries. These are with <laughs> phosphate batteries. Are they in some kind of an enclosure? Yes, it's actually a liquid cooled system. No, no, I mean, the build, is there a building around these things? Uh, they're individual containers. So if you can think about it as like a Connex style box, so like a shipping container style box, they're six by, they're six by eight by 30. So they're a little bit smaller. They're like your kind of almost like your 20 foot. Um, Do you include a, a, a rendering of what this place is going to look like in your, your application? Because like your application is very lengthy. Yes, it's very lengthy. And there's, a, there's an immense amount of information there. What's, once again, location, is that in the, uh, the gravel pit that's presently active now? Uh, it's in the forward more property. Uh, actually, specifically 29A is the property, parcel, parcel ID. Well, who, own, who owns when the property? The Kaczynski's, Carl's site work. And that's... Yeah. So the Kaczynski's thing, gravel pit, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tom, I just sent you our, our list of peer review engineers. Okay. And um, this project requires site plan approval, and we would definitely want to have uh, it peer reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, we ask that you contract directly with the peer reviewer and okay. uh, work directly with them. We do not need to be a conduit. Uh, we don't need to know what the discussions are. We just want to see a clean letter saying that this uh, project is appropriate and if built as designed will work as intended. Works. Is there, is there any place you could possibly source these other than communist China? Uh, currently, they're, they're, the, the sourcing of batteries is already a challenge enough right now, um, but with this new infrastructure bill that will be changing in the States, uh, GM's looking heavy into this, so. They're actually um, BYD and uh, this other company, they're the only ones that we can actually source these um, environmentally safe lithium iron phosphate batteries from everybody else uses heavy metal. So it's a challenging industry to find environmentally safe things that we can use. So where will the uh, connections be? From Breckenridge Road or from Huntington Road? Our connection will be at the pretty much the beginning of the driveway to get back into the pit, if you can picture it in your head. Um, if you're looking at the driveway, it's on the right-hand side. There's kind of a big tree over there. It'll be along that side of the road as de depicted on the site plans. So is it gonna be down in the gravel pit or outside of the adjacent property? The system itself will be down in um, the gravel pit, yes. Uh, right before really where the functional gravel pit is, there's a lay down area to the right. That's the area that it will be in. What type of temperature extremes can these batteries take? How much below zero, how much over 100? There are thresholds, um, but below zero, you can go about 40, 40 below zero, but these are all liquid cooled, liquid monitored, um, these battery cells. So um, the temperature remains the same all the time so they can operate at optimal. Um, optimal. What are they cooled with? Uh, it's all just glyco glycol and water like a car. So no different than having any car parked in the same area, so. What kind of glycol? If that leaks, it could go into the aquifer. What kind of glycol? Dark crash in the woods as well, too. What kind of glycol? It's just water and ethylene. I could get it specific. It's specific. It's in the site plan. Yeah, I just looked at it. It's 150 pages. Yes. So what kind of glycol is the question? It's just your typical coolant for your car. Just simple. That, that, that's hazardous material. You will not, that would not be allowed. That is way too many chemicals to be allowed. Okay. Trope, ethylene, gly say. ethylene glycol is a poison. It's not considered. Um, a poison. Ethylene glycol is a poison. Propylene glycol is not. Ethylene glycol is what is in your car radiator. I can double back with you on it. Okay. And exactly what it is you need you need if you're going to be cooling you're going to be cooling with a glycol it needs to be 
food grade? It very well may be. Um, okay, and it may be. Back with the, the question, because there's, like I said, there's two kinds. Ethylene glycol is poisonous. That's what's in your car radiator. Propylene glycol is what you typically see in a uh, solar system or in uh, well, boiler systems. Yeah, and that's I'd, I'd, I'd like a third party chemist to tell tell us what it is so we know. It's on, I, it's on the it's, it's technically on the spec sheet that's in the submission package. Okay. I, again, you know, I asked if there's any any chemicals. You says no. And now you tell me there's, there's no hazardous chemicals in the system. There are not. Okay, uh, I would suggest that you familiarize yourself with a, I can with double that with you at our hearing. Okay. Does this go to one of our review um, companies? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And there's a looks like a an overflow that goes into the next parcel. Is that right? Yep. It's utilizing a um, existing depression in the ground with an existing pipe that crosses the road. We'll also be submitting with um, okay. RDA with the. Uh, it's a different parcel, but it's the same owner, I, I believe. Is, is that right? Okay. Like, like Lennon said, they'll, they'll, we'll sell them the ro ropes that they hang themselves with. That's a little history. That's, that's very... Cheerful, Mike. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So, um, so you want to apply for the the uh, site plan approval tonight for the solar special permit? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Bill, it, it, Bill, Bill the wire is there uh, in our bylaw anything that addresses something like this. Addresses what? The... Well, the fact that it's it's not, you know, when we wrote the solar bylaw, we're assuming we're looking at the... Uh... Yes, it does specifically talk about... Um... Yeah. Internet is slow today, but it's but it specifically talks about storage devices or storage facilities. Well, Firefox doesn't want to let me get into the zoning bylaw today. No, if you want, um, it, it does say all equipment, machinery, and structures utilized in connection with the conversion of light to electricity. This includes, but is not limited to, transmission, storage, collection, and supply of equipment, substations, transformers, services, and access roads. So it says the storage part, which is intended for the smart program. Yeah, that, that's consistent with my recollection. So yes, it, it is okay. in the broad limits of what. Okay. <clears throat> um, we could set January eighteenth up as your as your, your uh, public hearing date. Do you have the abutters list someplace? Yes, and that's included in the package as well. On mailing labels, uh, I have those to be dropped off with the um, uh, paper copies tomorrow. I was waiting to get a uh, number. Okay. How how big is this? Fee. How big is this parcel that you're putting this on? Uh, the parcel in particular is 4.99 acres. Okay, and how big is your physically, what is the size of your facility? Our footprint altogether involved about a half an acre, a little less. So roughly 25,000, 24,000 square feet? Uh, roughly, take, yeah. Is there a new pavement or is it, it's all existing gravel? This is all existing, this is all existing gravel. Okay. Minimal uh, brush clearing. 
I don't believe there's any major trees that have to come down either. Okay, I will take your application. I'll put a filing fee on it. Does I believe? Okay, so we have your town key. Okay, well, I've got, I don't want to say your email on the air. <laughs> You'll be getting lots of goodies, maybe. Um, <laughs> anyways, I will put you up. I will take your application. I'll print it out, put a fee on it, and sign it and email it back to you. And if you could get the uh, mailing labels or envelopes, whichever your choice is, two sets mm -hmm. to the town hall, um, then we can go from there. Okay. So you'll be emailing me the fee amount, so I'll know that. Yes, I will. With the application, will be the fee will be right on it. Okay. So, Estimation on when I just want to. I want to get the papers down to the office. Would is that going to be by tomorrow, or just curious? Okay, you should get that in the next couple, day or two. Okay, that sounds okay. good. Okay, and the, what is the actual name of the of your facility that you want to use? Uh, energy storage system, ESS. Okay. And you said it's a five megawatt battery system? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. 998 kilowatts. Are you replacing the fence and gates that's there now? Uh, those gates will most likely remain the same unless Steve wants us to change them out. Um, we discussed that a little bit with the fire chief as well. So there'll be a knock box. He'll have a knock box for that as well as the facility itself. Okay. okay. So the, the hearing time is officially 645. Uh, if we have any other matters scheduled for hearing, they'll also be scheduled for 645. Um, and we'll deal with it when we get to it. Sounds great, guys. Okay. That's your time. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Tom. Yes. When you get to, when you do these the peer review, try to make sure they get us the any approval letter at least a week before the public hearing date. Okay. Letter. A, the, a lot of the peer reviews are have a habit of getting yeah, right. us the review the day before or the day of. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And nobody really has a chance to take a good look at it, including you sometimes. Yes, I, I agree with you there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Be sure of that. I'll get rolling on that right away. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next in was Eric Martins. Mr. Martins. Hey, Bill. How's it going? What can, we, what can we do for you? So I, I made a small amend, amendment on, uh, I, I submitted the um, proof to Bill. It's for 344 Russell Street, uh, Hanush Jewelers Hadley. Uh, we had initially received approval for a non-illuminated illuminated channel letter sign. Uh, however, we needed to add a backer panel to it to match the background. And uh, it's just gonna be a, about a half inch bigger than the sign, the original submitted sign around. So just a background around and a back of your sign? Yeah, it's just a metal metal backer panel. It's simple. Still externally illuminated. No, there's no no illum oh yeah, right, you're right, never mind. Yeah. The, the the gooseneck lights are lighting illuminating it. Correct. I don't see a problem. So I think the last time this came in, there was some question about that some of the dimensions might maybe were off, but, right. but apparently yeah. we are now down to 39.8 square feet. Yep. That's, that's fine. That complies. Okay. Do we even need a motion, Mr. Dwyer? I'll do a motion to approve the uh, sign design. Okay. Second. Well, 
motion and second. There's a motion and a second. Do we have any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I, right. uh, I did send you, I had sent you this, Jim, already. The yep. uh, Yes, I got it. Okay. 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 All right. Well, have a good night, guys. Thank you for your help. Thank you, Eric. And then Steve. You're on mute. Your Zoom is still muted. You're still on mute, Steve. Unmute yourself. See if Joe Zagrana can help you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dwyer, are you able to unmute him? No, I can't do it from my end. Hmm. Yeah, you're still muted, Steve. I can ask to unmute. There we there go. You go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Can we help you with? Sir, so, as I have uh, issues with the, I have a couple of trailer on my yard and I talked to the building inspector came to me. He wants to remove them, you know, even in I have in my dock, uh, you know, I unload the stuff and uh, I where have two docks. Where was your and, yard? And, I mean, not a yard, but it's a, the parking lot. International Market. Maple, yes. Maple. yes, sir. You know, you know. Uh, where? Russell Maple, Street? Maple Farm. Ten, Maple Ten, Farm. Ten, oh, okay. 10 uh, South Maple. Yeah. Not so, permitted. On, the, the, to be, I'll be very honest and very, very straightforward. They're not permitted on your property. The zoning bylaw is specific. Storage trailers are not permitted. And even my dock there? In the... Any, not, not at all. Not, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be straight out. Storage trailers are not permitted on your property. But we work in, in and out in there, you know, we put in equipment and taking out the equipment there. Uh, I don't know. When you when your site plan approval was granted, it specifically mentioned storage trailers are not permitted. I don't know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just trying to be mm -hmm. straight honest. So what are you suggesting now? What do you what I'm gonna do? Now? What do you guys say? You have to get rid of your storage trailers. So if you need the space, you might have to build. I mean that uh, I have two dock there. One is the trailer there, and I have a cooler on it. I'm using as the also sometime for the you know uh, produce cooler. And uh, and uh, the other dock is I'm using my tra trailer. Do you, you grow any of the vegetables that you sell there? Uh, not, I'm not doing it. You re you're recommending it? Just wondered. <laughs> no, that, that's irrelevant. Even if he was growing it, he couldn't keep the trailers. Well, didn't didn't we allow somebody here on uh, Lawrence Plain to keep a trailer there uh, at the, that farm? What's it called? Of the uh, one farm over or something. Yeah, Next yeah. farm over. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Not Did we allow them to keep a trailer there for two years? Right. She has a she has a definite right. time limit of when. That's it's right. Be That's removed. right. That's right. Can I have it two years too? I can. I have a lot of equipment in there. Well, we're not saying so, you're going to get rid of it tomorrow, but they need in, to get. But they need to go. Jim, Jim, I have some health issues, my uh, prostate removed and, blot and bladder things and this and that. I'm going in the hospital. We, winter coming in front of us. So I, I will not enjoy the, having the trailer there. So I will get rid of it, but is it, you not you guys not going to choke me tomorrow 
no so addition for that. We are we have no enforcement authority. We interpret the zoning bylaw. I understand. We work with the building inspector. The building yes. inspector is the zoning enforcement officer. Yes. So we have told you that trailers are not permitted. Yes. But um, and and we'll tell Mr. Quinlan that we told you trailers are not permitted. <laughs> we'll tell him that trailers are not permitted. <laughs> but how he chooses to approach enforcing that is in his hands. Okay. So if he gives you a time frame that says, I'm not going to say any time frame, but he gives you a time frame that they're going to be removed by and something done that is within his jurisdiction. He can do that. He has the authority. Okay. You know, so. again, we're not telling you tomorrow to get rid of it. We're simply saying you have they they need, they're not permitted. And you can take that that up with Mr. Quinlan when he gets when he returns from wherever he is. Okay. 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 Um, you can have Mr. Quinlan talk to Mr. Dwyer and myself. And, you know, we're, we're not trying to put you out of business or anything like that. Or anything. I am. You know, I am. We want, you're, you're a good business. We want to keep you there. Um, we need to work together. Thank you very much. So, so I have also, in the, okay, I'm listening. Somebody was saying something. Oh, I've just said good luck with your health problems. Right. Thank you. Uh, also, I have a one five, six years ago, Green Street Cafe closed it and then they had it. They were selling their awning and then Chilson or Wilson, whatever company came and hang, I bought it and they hanged up on front of my store. And uh, what I going to do with that building inspector said is never had a, a permit. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be any permit you know, uh, filed any, any application for now is that that's the issue too. So what I'm doing this kind of situation. So yeah, you probably want to talk to the building inspector about what you're going to replace it with and how long it's going to take you to come it's up going with to be there. That awning is going to be there. I mean, what I'm saying is we didn't file any application five, six, year, seven years ago. It wasn't so, part of the site plan review, is what you're saying. And I, I wasn't yeah. here for that. Was anybody else? So um, I would suggest you uh, take a picture of what it, what it looks like. Okay. And uh, send it in to us. Okay. And we can, we have authority okay. to waive further site plan approval. If okay. it seems to be a minor change, okay. But just uh, send uh, send a picture in. Uh, you can um, email it to the planning board email at um, at the Hadley website, and um, then come back I to will. a future meeting. I will. But I have one. Uh, I have two trailer there. Active trailer. I am, if I register and that, and I do the sometime uh, change the plate and use this one or the other one. And then uh, uh, should I, any uh, those trailers on my parking lot or the my dock, if I register them, what will, what will be the, my situation? And, and there, you, can, you can drive them, you can drive them away. No, 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 not drivable. Yes, I'd say that changes everything. Yes, I'm not going to do a register all of them. I'm just going to do one or two of them. Two of them. One is active all the time. I'm driving, but the other one is, is a reserve fifty thousand dollar trailer. So, you might, am I register that? I cannot get it, get rid of it because the very expensive refer uh, trailer. Would, would, would you have to put a new cab in front to drive it away or will it, does it have its own cab? Mm, I have to change the cab. I mean, I have to change the tractor. Same yeah. tractor goes both. Yeah, yeah. So that sounds like we were talking about a different kind of trailer. Maybe you should send us 
picture, as Bill said, and we can review this. At this is basically next... a tractor trailer box, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. If it is roadworthy and registered, um, that the site originally was uh, a um, moving company storage site. So, um, you know, we certainly had trucks there. Um, if you if you can keep it registered and roadworthy, um, that's a different story. We'll um, if you can do that, we can talk about it again. Okay. Okay. So I talk to the uh, building inspector, and I do my best in short time reduce them size. I mean, uh, I have a couple of, uh, of them is. Two of them is very usable, very expensive. So I'm going to keep them and register them. And the rest I'm going to get rid of as soon as I can. Okay. How are you doing, Jim? <laughs> We're getting a little bit old, all of us, huh? <laughs> yeah. So is uh, I'm, I know what I'm going to do now and what direction I'm going to take it. So I'm going to get rid of a couple of them. Those are not a useful uh, trailer, but it, those are a good one trailer, very expensive one. I'm going to, I alternate them actually, you know, use one of them sometime. Different use, so I use the different trailer. Okay. Okay, I appreciate the, your help. So okay. I'm going to do the awning and the trailer. Get rid of it. Okay. Or get it registered. Right? Yes, two of them. Two of them I'm going to register. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Merry Christmas. You Merry too. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Reedy, you're last. Do you have something for us? Or you just I'm here, here for the 645 hearing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's tomorrow, Tom. The uh, Handridge uh, access across other than frontage. Correct. Oh, okay. That's Moody Bridge Road, right? Correct. Do you have a street address there? Oh, that's a good question. 50, five zero. Okay, make it official. There we go. The planning board, Hadley Planning Board will conduct the public hearing on Tuesday, December 7th, 2021, beginning at 6.45. Purpose of the meeting is to review the application of Handrich, I have his first name, for a special permit of access across other than frontage on their property on Moody Bridge Road. Plans are available by emailing planning at Hadley MA org or visit town clerk's office during normal business hours. Um, details for dial up and presume are at the bottom of the note, published twice in the Gazette, November 8th and 15th. And with that. So Tom, the last time I spoke with the town clerk, she had re not received the payment of the fee for the um, maybe okay. taking care of that. Yeah, it's I've got a note in the file that we paid it on November 3rd. So okay. we will check in. And if not, then obviously we'll we'll make that payment. 
And then, uh, Jim, this is one that we mailed on November 10th. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Bill, maybe if I could share my screen, I think, you know, it's it should pretty... be, you should be active. Okay. Must be contentious. It looks like quite an audience. <laughs> yeah. you got Randy Iser. <laughs> he stayed on the whole time too. I was waiting for him. So actually, um, it's interesting. I, I did have at least two inquiries about this. So uh, people who went to the town hall to uh, look at the plans. Oh, no kidding. Did not ask for them electronically. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, so for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of Bill and Priscilla Handrich uh, for the special permit for access over something other than their frontage. You may recall I was here about a month ago um, as, as we were submitting and I showed this same plan, which uh, I inartfully color coordinated, but I think it, it does the trick. So what's happening is that Bill and Priscilla are working with Mass Department of Agricultural Resources to put an APR on about 40.5 of their acres off Moody Bridge Road. And so uh, in the blue outline is the parcel that is going to have uh, the APR on it, but this green portion is going to be excluded. Uh, I would expect that uh, someone from uh, uh, Sherman and Frederick will be in front of you maybe later this month or in January for an a and plan. Um, the ultimate result is this yellow outline piece is going to be their homestead. Their access is up here. If you're following my mouse, it's towards the, the northerly side of their property bounds. It's an existing driveway. It's actually the, the road that you can take if you want to go back to this farm field for the hay back there. Um, but it's this road right here that comes into their homestead. And so before we go through that APR process, you know, I had coordinated with uh, Bill or corresponded with Bill and we thought out of a, a, an abundance of caution, it was better to go through this process because once we get the ANR and then the state's involved, if we want to do anything, it's just going to be somewhat of a, a headache. So it's really requesting from you a special permit to access as shown on the plan. Uh, his frontage, he has 200 feet of frontage right here. So we're not looking um, for any waiver in, in as far as that's concerned, just really to access this house from here. What is the dashed part across the Western part of his parcel? Is that the Fort River or something? Oh, this here? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like, let me see if I can look at I got a better plan. It's Hart's Brook. It just and, says Brook on this plan, but there we go, Hart's Brook. That's Hart's Brook. Okay. okay. It's so keeping his driveway where it is, as opposed to disturbing all that wetland. Well, not only that, but the access on Moody Bridge Road is a extremely steep bank where yeah. it is if i remember right there, yeah, yeah yeah right by this curve here yeah yeah, yeah. it's probably a i, I want to say it's probably a good 15 feet high yeah maybe more very very steep very and when, when this was this was put in he he owned this whole parcel and he came to see us and he simply wanted to put his driveway way out of the way so he wouldn't have to cut into his frontage here. Hmm. Um, but I believe because he oh, he's cutting out the yellow, the, is the yellow is not cut out, is that correct, Tom? Yeah, the yellow, I think it shows up as its own, let me take a look. It shows up right now as its own uh, tax parcel on the assessor's map, it's, it's parcel 20. Okay. Um, but I don't know that it's, I didn't, I think the deed is all one deed for all of this. So I think this is being carved off. We're having the APR put over here. This is being excluded from the APR. Um, and I know that 
the tax parcel, this is one tax parcel. And it looks like this, I think this whole, uh, this is 21A and then this is 21. So you've got 20, 21A to this dash line and then 21 back there. Tom, can I help you for a minute? I would love that, Randy. Okay, so based on what I'm seeing, the, the, the yellow parcel says lot 1A includes lot one and parcel A. So lot one, I believe is the original house lot and it does not include the little L to the north that has the well in it and it shows paved drive in there. So I correct. think that's part, part of the other parcel. This is what's being added. That is correct, Randy. Very perceptive. So parcel yeah. one is the dog leg and then the, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you got lot one right here and then this is the A. You can see if you follow the mouse, this is not part of the existing parcel, but they're carving, so as Randy said, with that parcel A, that's this rectangle right here. So the resulting parcel will be this yellow one. Okay. Yeah, because when he came in, this was, I believe, before we had access across other than frontage. He, this this parcel has been, house has been here for quite a while, if I'm correct, right, Randy? Yes, 20 years probably, and close to it. Yes, he came in because of the steep bank, like I said before, and he asked if he could put his driveway way up here where it was easy access and just run it across his property. And because he owned everything, it wasn't a big deal. But now that's going, now that's going into APR, he's got a basically are you dot his eyes and cross his t's now that's right jimmy were you referring to the subdivision that wanted to put one of the roads there as an exit when that is that what you're referring to the what the subdivision that was going to have an exit on moody bridge road now, this is a little further uh, along the road okay but it, it is a steep hill, you're right. It's so uh, Tom, if you could pop out of there for a minute and let me do a share. So uh, this is where the house is now. That's lot one. Uh, parcel 20, parcel 21A, and parcel 21 back here. The brook is the dividing line. Property back here belongs to Cook. This is Handrich. This is Handrich. And this is Handrich. And we get a better depiction of the brook here. And here's Grand Oak Farm over here. Yep. So when they were talking about exiting onto Moody Bridge, I think it was in here somewhere. Right. Right. Correct. So it was, uh, this is uh, you know, another okay. few you. hundred feet down the road. Right. Okay. Now, is APR approved that driveway uh, Usually they want ex an exclusive right for a right of way not to be shared. Yeah, that was one. And we actually, they specifically called it because they asked how, how big of an easement I wanted. So I think I said 20 feet. And then they went and said, well, it's, it's probably about 15 feet now. Is that okay? And we said, yeah, that's, that's fine. Probably because it's existing. But, but we specifically had the conversation with them. Okay. Because usually they ask for 25 unencumbered by any other blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But they'll have unrestricted access. This, this is a right of way over the APR, but they'll have uh, street frontage with the APR. Correct. So they'll have as much access as they can have. You know, you know Bill said that there was, he got a few inquiries. I was at a church meeting and by coincidence, several of the abutters were at the church meeting. They asked me about it because this right after, right after you must have mailed out the notices. Yeah. And I explained to them what it was. They says, oh, no problem. 
So that's probably why there's nobody on this call because I think most of them were explained what it is about and they didn't have any, they had no concerns once it was explained. Good explanation then. Oh, well, that's what the system is about. By way of information for uh, the APR uh, land that's in Hadley, uh, I had my inspection on my couple of APR parcels and they have to do a lot of research to find out exactly how many parcels are Hadley in APR. There's 160 parcels of land in APR and Hadley and that amounts to 3,350 acres. So we are the largest APR farmland contributor to this program. And this is going to be more. It's more, yeah. Was uh, Alexander Dawson part of the whole APR startup or? No, it, <laughs> it, 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 goes back, it goes back before that. And it okay. really, Dukakis uh, was the governor at the time and uh, he came to Hadley. It's kind of a little bit of a long story. The chief of my orthodontic department was treating Dukakis's kid and my name came up. And so he said, how about a farmhouse in Hadley? And I said, not my farmhouse. So it was at the Parsons farmhouse that the APR was signed. And Mike Piwatka was the conservation commission chairman at the time. So that was a little bit before Alexandra. Okay, thank you. That was quite a while ago. Yes, it was. I was a twinkle. Uh... <laughs> Is that the first time Dukakis had ever been on a farm? <laughs> Out of a tank. Well, it was really funny. So sitting down next to him, I, he said, uh, you know, what do you grow? And uh, he almost coughed when I said some tobacco, but a lot of vegetables. He said, do you grow arugula and kale as well? And this was a long time ago. <laughs> And oh, Belgian Indives was the other one he wanted us to do. <laughs> okay, back to the topic at hand. Any other comments on the uh, access across? If not, Mr. I'm Dwyer? So, yep, I'm just uh, getting the date on the plan. Thank you, Mr. Reedy. Thank you, Mr. Iser. Nice presentation. You're welcome. Win, Put the you, invoice in the mail, Randy. Yeah, you, no problem. You guys win for patience. We have no choice, Mark. <laughs> so this is marked as a preliminary plan, um, which I guess we can uh, we could approve according to that, but obviously we'll need to. Uh, revisit it if anything changes but that'll be in the um, so i'll move to grant the application for a special permit for access across other than frontage based upon the following findings project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw by minimizing curb cuts and entering at a less steep slope project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood uh, work will be conducted in accordance with the APR uh, APR, uh, APR plan by Sherman and Friedrich with a preliminary date of August 17, 2021. Uh, this access shall be the only access to the dwelling uh, depicted on the plan and other existing access points will be taken out of service permanently. And this approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required. Um, and any project uh, changes directed by other boards or agencies must be approved by the planning board. That is the motion. Second. We have motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks very much, guys. Good seeing everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Tom. Merry Christmas. Happy Bye -bye. Hanukkah. Thank you. Happy Hanukkah. Tom, how's the uh, 40? Oops. That's it.
<laughs> and I think Grandpa Randy's probably going to get yanked out of the picture too. Yeah. Let's see. Other business. I I, all the it. kids are going to bed. I have to mute myself. <laughs> Not ready for prime time, Randy. That's it. We need a, let's see. Joe, we were glad you could join us. I like that sweater. Is that salmon or orange or? It's, uh, I guess it's burnt orange. Like there you go. University like of it. Texas. He's, uh, he's uh, doing a little uh, moonlighting at the DPW garage. <laughs> the, uh, let's see, other business. Sorry, Mike. I just I cut Mike off. I, I left uh, too soon. What, what do you know? What do you hear about the forty uh, B business? Anything? Oh, it, it it's interesting. You guys have a project? I don't know. Do you? Maybe. I haven't heard much. Uh, I haven't heard much since. But uh, there's some talk going on. Well, that's good. That's good because uh, I hear somebody wants to put something in the Econo Lodge, and it's not forty B. So. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, we'll uh, yeah. we'll pursue that a little bit. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay. Now, anything else? Okay. Now I'll say goodbye. Merry Hasta Christmas, Happy, Easter. Easter. <laughs> Happy New Year. Okay, um, we need to approve our pay for this. Uh, I guess the second quarter of the fiscal second quarter of the fiscal year, Bill. Yeah, second. Uh, this would be the. We're in the second quarter of the fiscal year. Yeah. Need to approve five hundred seventy-five dollars for our pay, right? I'll make a motion to approve five hundred seventy-five dollar payroll. Second. We have a motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion. I'll abstain. No, no. I'll, I'll support it. <laughs> you, know what? you want to abstain? <laughs> <laughs> motion passes unanimously. Um, I did, just for information, I did get a bunch of invoices from the Gazette of Overdue, and I've been trying to sort through them because the way they're doing this is, to say it's, it's, it's a complicated matter is, is putting it mildly because they just gave me a bunch of numbers and invoice, invoice numbers and bills and amounts, and after sorting through them, I also found out that one of the invoices belong to the zoning board of appeals so i've got to give that to them but it was in our mailbox in our envelope and the other invoices that says we are owed <clears throat> or we owe the gazette money um we've already paid it or i already sent the request into the town accountant so i just need to sort out with the town account that that has indeed been paid so we don't need to pay the gazette anything we're up to date like i said that's just information and that is all I have. I do not have anything else either. Should, should we send Enos Cantor a letter, the guy from the Celtic Center, see if he'd like to attend the next meeting on the batteries? <laughs> <laughs> Only if they're made in China. Yeah, yeah. well. I think, I think we, we, we get the positive uh, answer on that one, but I think Aunt Enos would probably contribute quite a bit. <laughs> okay. Mike, are you going over? Yeah, come on by. We'll okay. Over. Yeah, okay. Bill, before Bill, before you sign off, uh, is the Board of Trustees still going to meet? Uh, next Thursday. Next Thursday. Can you... Oh, have a week from Thursday, I should say. From Thursday. Can you have the scholarships uh available? Yep. okay is there Thank anything you. you guys want me to work josie over on at joe's tonight <laughs> whatever you want him whatever you want to do to him hey that was a hell of a game last night wasn't it that was a, i i've that never was, seen like i've never seen anything like that what was that the 14 to 10 Pass yeah. and bills yeah two out of three passes <laughs> they ran it and ran now, it. And the, ran the it. interesting comment in this morning's with this morning on that thing was you know the only redirect 
regret Belichick may have about that game was that he passed three times. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, anyway. That first one was up for grabs. He just well, tapped he, it, and that was, yeah. You know, anyway, you, well, you're right, Mark, about that grab. I'd like to inspect those gloves. I mean, you probably <laughs> don't remember Boletnikov, but when he fell down once and he came up Fred. and there was on his hands. Fred Boletnikov. So they, that was that stick of that they used to put on. Uh, now those gloves, they, I think they put spider tack on them. And I think they gave their gloves to the MLB pitchers who yeah. just had them taken away. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Next All right. meeting to adjourn. So Next look. meeting is meeting Christmas is Eve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Ciao.